This is the 28th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. With our Synology NAS now providing us with a centralized location to store data on our home network, it makes sense to utilize some of that storage capacity to provide any computers connected to our network with a location that can be used to automatically back up any important data that is stored on their local hard drives. As both Windows 10 and Mac OS have built-in backup applications, we can use these applications in conjunction with our Synology NAS to create the first of a three-part backup solution for our home network. So in this video, we will first create a user account that will have exclusive access rights to a network share that we have created on our NAS. This new network share will be used for the sole purpose of storing backups to any Mac OS or Windows 10 computers that we have connected to our home network. We will then demonstrate how we configure Time Machine on Mac OS and File History on Windows 10 to backup to our Synology NAS. First, we need to log into DiskStation Manager using our administrator's credentials. Now from the DSM's desktop, we need to select Control Panel. Under the section File Sharing, we need to locate and select User. From within User, we need to create a new user account. When the User Creation Wizard opens, we first need to create a username that will help us identify that this user account relates purely to computer backups. As we predominantly use Apple Macintosh computers, we have decided to call this user account Time Machine. It is a good idea to add a description to the user account to make it easier to identify this account in the future. As this account is a non-user account, there's no need to assign this account with an email address. The password for this account will need to conform to the password rules that we set in a previous video. Finally, for this account, we will disallow the user to change account passwords. This is simply to ensure that the network share that we will be creating will always remain accessible to this account. Let's select Next. Under Join Groups, we will leave this account assigned to its default group of users. While in Assigned Shared Folder Permissions, because this user account will not be acting as a standard user account, there's no need to assign folder permissions to this account. If allowed, typically a backup will use as much storage space as it can be assigned. So in User Quota Settings, we will limit the amount of storage space our backups can use on our NAS. We will do this by entering a number into the quota column. As the storage capacity of our NAS is relatively small, we will limit the total size that our Time Machine account can use to 500 gigabytes. If we find that 500 gigabytes is not enough storage space for all of the computers that we wish to back up, we can simply increase the user quota settings for the Time Machine account. Let's select Next. Under Assign Application Permissions, because our Time Machine account will not be acting as a standard user account, there's no need for the account to have access to any applications on our NAS. It is for this reason that we will deny access to all of the applications listed here. Within User Speed Limit Settings, we will leave these settings on their defaults. Finally, let's select Apply to create this new user account. With our new user account now created, let's create a new network share by selecting Shared Folder from the sidebar. Within Shared Folder, we first need to select Create. When the Shared Folder Creation Wizard opens, in the file name, we need to assign our network share with a name. For this example, we will use Time Capsule. Once again, in the description field, we need to make a note of what this network share is for. 
Next, we need to choose a location where we wish the network share to be. In this example, we will use volume 1, as we previously decided to use volume 2 purely for media files. Don't forget that the maximum size that this network share can be will be determined by our Time Machine user account, which is limited to 500 gigabytes. For our time capsule share, we will be disabling Recycle Bin, as this will save storage space on our NAS. When we select Next, we're asked if we wish to encrypt the shared folder. As our NAS does not have a dedicated chip to encrypt and decrypt data stored in our network shares, if we were to enable encryption on this model of NAS, it would affect the performance of our NAS. It is for this reason that we've decided not to enable encryption. When we select Next, we're asked to confirm our settings. By selecting Apply, we create a new network share. The final step is to assign access permissions to our Time Capsule shared folder. Under Name, we need to locate Time Machine and then assign it with Read Write Access. As you can see, both the admin and the administrator's user accounts will also have Read Write Access to the Time Capsule share. Let's select OK. With our Time Capsule shared folder now created, we need to locate and select file services from the sidebar. Within File Services, you can see that SMB service is enabled. However, under AFP, which is Apple File Protocol, because Apple is in the process of deprecating AFP, we have not enabled this service. Let's select the Advanced tab. Under Bonjour, you can see that Bonjour Service Discovery is enabled. However, in order to allow the backup application on our Apple Macintosh computers to see our backup share, we need to enable Bonjour Time Machine broadcast via SMB. Next, we need to select Set Time Machine Folders. Now from the list of network shares, we need to enable the share called Time Capsule. When we select Apply, we are returned to File Services. When we select Apply for a second time, as our NAS is currently using SMB2, we are now informed that our NAS will restart network services and enable SMB3 along with some additional SMB standards. As SMB3 is the latest version of server message block, it might not be compatible with older versions of Windows. However, as we are using Windows 10 and the latest version of macOS, SMB3 will be fully compatible with these operating systems. So let's select Yes. With our Time Capsule shared folder now ready to be used, let's log out of the control panel, log out of Destination Manager, and take a look at configuring the backup applications on our home computers. The backup application in macOS is called Time Machine. So if we select System Preferences, and then select Time Machine, we'll be presented with settings to configure the Time Machine application. As you can see here, the settings for Time Machine are locked. So let's first select the padlock and enter the account details for a user with administrator rights over this computer. If we choose Select Backup Disk, we will see any network drives that this computer is currently connected to. We will also see the Time Capsule shared folder that we created earlier in this video. Let's select Time Capsule and choose Use Disk. We are now informed that we're attempting to connect to our Synology NAS, so let's select Connect. Now as a registered user, we need to enter the username Time Machine, along with the password that we set for the Time Machine account. 
when we select Connect, the Time Machine application will automatically start. You can see that our time capsule has been limited to 500 gigabytes, and we have a countdown as to when our backup will begin. As the Time Machine application will work in the background, it is useful to enable Show Time Machine in Menu Bar. This will display the Time Machine icon and inform you when a backup is being made. At the moment, Time Machine is currently not making a backup, so the arrow for the Time Machine icon is at 9 o'clock. You can see that we're presented with Time Machine's backup schedule, which will automatically make a backup every hour and keep daily, weekly and monthly backups of our files. When the time capsule share becomes full, Time Machine will delete the oldest backups to make space for newer backups. The initial backup will back up the whole of our computer, so will take a considerable amount of time. However, after the first backup, Time Machine will only back up files that have been changed, so subsequent backups should be a lot faster. You can tell that Time Machine is making a backup from the icon in the menu bar. If the arrow on the Time Machine icon is at 7 o'clock, a backup is in progress. Finally, for anyone working on an Apple Macintosh laptop, Time Machine will not automatically make a backup if the laptop is running on battery. However, if you manually run a Time Machine backup while running on battery, Time Machine will back up your files. The backup solution built into Windows 10 is called File History and is designed to backup files saved to a Windows user's profile. Within Windows, there are a number of different ways to access file history. However, we will select Settings from our Start menu and then from within the Windows Settings panel, we will locate and select Update and Security. Now from the sidebar, we are going to select the option called Backup. When we select Backup, you can see that we have an option to add a drive. However, when we select this option, our Time Capsule Network Share is not listed. Instead, we need to select More Options. Now from within Backup Options, we need to select See Advanced Settings to display File History. Once again from the sidebar, we need to choose the option Select Drive. As we want to connect to the Time Capsule folder share that we've already created, we now need to select Add Network Location. From within the window that opens, we need to select our Synology NAS, where we will be prompted to enter the network credentials that will allow us to access our Time Capsule. So in username, we need to enter Time Machine and then we need to enter the password for the Time Machine account. We now need to instruct Windows to remember these credentials when opening this share. After selecting OK, we can choose Time Capsule from the list of network shares. With Time Capsule now identified as a file history drive, you can see that 10 gigabytes of the Time Capsule's total space has been used by our Apple Macintosh computer. Let's select OK. File History will copy files that have been saved to the libraries and the desktop of this Windows 10 computer. It will also save our contacts and any favorites to the network share on our NAS. However, unlike the Time Machine backup on our Mac, File History does not make a full backup of Windows 10. Also, any applications installed or any secondary user profiles that were created on this computer will not be backed up. Let's turn on file history and make our first backup. With our backups now made, it is best practice to make regular checks to ensure that we can recover files from our backups. Not only does this check to ensure that our backups have not become corrupted, it also acts as a memory refresher for when we actually have to recover files. So to recap, in this video we created a network share called Time Capsule to provide the computers on our network 
with a centralised location to make backups. We then took a look at how to configure Time Machine on Mac OS and file history in Windows 10. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at the second part of our three-part backup solution.